Hi viewers and welcome to the channel and welcome to the mini series for the FreeCAD Curves Workbench. We're on episode 17 and we're going to be looking at the Curves on Surface tool. So this tool allows you to place curves on a surface by referencing a curve or an edge and projecting that on its surface. It allows you to make lattice work, spirals, threads, grooves, all by projecting that curve onto your surface and using boolean and cut tools to remove that from there. It also allows you to take that curve on that surface and either project it normally or binormally on the surface. So you can actually place that shape of that curve as a face against that surface or project it outwards as a ridge. So there's many applications for this and we're gonna look at a few on how to use this tool in this video. If you like this video, please hit a like and also subscribe to the channel. I also have a Ko-Fi site where you can actually donate to my contributions to the community and that's at ko-fi.com slash mang0. So we've opened up FreeCAD and to use the workbench, we obviously need it to be installed, which we go through the add-on manager. If you haven't been following along in the previous episodes, then we need this workbench and it's available from the curves, which is installed on my computer here, but we can just click install slash update selected there. And after installation, it'll ask you just to restart FreeCAD and it's all installed. On the curves workbench, we're gonna be using this tool here the create a curve on surface object also available on curves curves on surface so what this does if i create a sketch object first so new sketch xy plane and i'm just show you how this works so i've got my sketch ready and i'm going to create a circle and the whole idea is i'm going to place a rim around a sphere or a groove around the sphere with this circle so we'll close that and we've got this circle here. I didn't take note of the dimensions. What's the dimensions of this circle? This dimension is, let's go for the radius. And let's go for about 10 millimeters on the radius. So 10 millimeter radius. So I'm gonna come in to the part workbench. Now I'm gonna create a sphere in here. And we're gonna project this curve onto this sphere. And well, we can go with five millimeter radius. It's fine, whatever radius we want, because as long as this is not bigger than this curve or single edge that goes round, it's got to be a single edge that surrounds the object or covers part of the object. We can use that over in the curves workbench and clicking on our sketch curve or our edge there, it's got to be a single edge. Control clicking on the sphere, and we'll use that tool there, this one here, create a curve on surface. Let's create an object there. You can see there's a dotted line. Let's put a bit of angle on there. You can see that dotted line going around there. Interesting thing is the properties. So we've got this line that goes around. It's projected that as it, a separate object. So I can transform this if I so desire and well we'll rotate it around that object like so and we can do that or we can transform it and move it so we've got that curve around there and the interesting thing is this output so you can see we've got a number of options in the data view for all the bits and pieces that are attached to this curve on surface We've got the face of where it's actually been placed upon. We've got the input edge, which is used as the reference for the curve. And we've got this output. At the moment it's curve only. If we place this normal to face, that will mean that will jut out from that face. If I click now, you can see how that's jutted out. Remembering that this curve here, we originally control click that face and that's make another one there. There we go. And use that one as well. So that's sitting there now. So you can see how we can make multiple curves on that surface. So we've got that output and we change that to normal to face and that juts out from that face like so. We can change the face width. So if I set that to five, that'll bring that up to that edge there. 
because we've got five millimeter radius on our object there. And we've just added another five millimeters on there to bring this out to that edge that ran around there of the sketch. Now we've got that, I'm just gonna set this back to one millimeters. And you can see this juts out one millimeters. We can make that symmetrical to that face. If we come down, we've got the symmetry. We can set that to true. And that makes that symmetrical to face. So that one millimeter has been split in half. So 0.5 juts out and 0.5 in the middle. And we can do the same with this one as well. So we come back to the symmetric and true and set those. Remember you can click on both of these and set them together like so, if you so desire. So there's a little shortcut for you. And we've got a number of other settings down here. So those are symmetric to that face. If we come in and have a look at the other one here, the output mode is binormal. So they will layer along that face like so. So if you do in any so if you had a barrel and you was doing any ribs around there, ribs around the barrel and you wanted to cast some circles around the barrel and place the ribs around there, then you can do that. And those ribs can be changed. So one millimeter, two millimeter, etc. Remembering that we have this in the part workbench, we can add some thickness with the 3D offset tools to offset the shape, also on part 3D offset. And if we look at what's happened, that's made a, made a 3D offset of one millimeter apart, working at quite a small scale here. So that's, that's 0 0.2, yeah, 0 0.2 and fill that offset. That's made that solid offset around there now, like so. And the same for our other one, which is here and do the offset from the menu here because this is a drop down here we can use the 3d offset exactly the same and you can see i've just clicked on the sphere and press the space bar you can see that's gone inwards let's set that outwards and again because we're working at such a small scale we're going to set this to something like pressing the up and down arrow keys something like that and fill the offset and okay so we've got the two offsets now, which we can boolean or union with this object. So if I take the object, control click the offset and we can make a cut between those. Remembering that inside that cut and that offset, that curves surface, we can find it. Well, the sketch is still available there. So I press the space bar to hide that. And that one there is that curve on surface. Press the space bar to hide that because it's still visible. And you can see that we've got a nice groove running around there. And we've got the ring run, running around the outside. So in a nutshell, that's how to use the curves on surface tool. We'll look at some other applications for that now. Another example of using this tool, the create a curves on surface object is something like an Archimedes screw. Now we can use in the part, say a simple cylinder, or we could use a revolve. I'm going to use a revolve. So I'm going to come into the sketcher, make it a bit more complicated. So create a sketch, X, Y plane. Okay, that. And I'm going to create a shape across here. So we're going to look at the B spline and create something to revolve so something like I'm going to go past the center line actually there we go something like that hit escape and those are connected to that line there now let's make this a bit bigger so we've got this object that I want to revolve basically like a thread around like an Archimedes screw thread around here so we've got this let's hit close I'm going to need with my revolves, I like to have a line that I can revolve around. So I want a line that goes down here. I'm going to use the sketcher or even consider we're in the curves workbench. I'll come into the curves and I want this vertex here. Control click this vertex just here. I'll just throw in a parametric line 
that runs across those two. And that's going to be the line that I'm going to be using to revolve around. Back in the part workbench, we can click on this curve and use the revolve tool, also available from part revolve. And we've got the sketch. I'm going to select the reference because I don't want to be dealing with sorting out my X, Y, Z rotations there. It's easy to go visually and select that reference there. So I've selected and clicked on the line edge. I hit selecting, select the line edge there. So that's all sorted. We can change the angle if we so desire, but I'm okay with that and I hit OK and that's created a revolution around there. Now we've got this object we can take this edge here if we so desire control click the object and in the curves workbench we can reflect that across there but I don't really want to do that I want to create a spiral around this now I can use the parametric compression spring here or I can come over to the part and use on here, which is our creation of parametrized geometric primitives, or in part, create primitives, less of a mouthful there. And we can come down and select the helix. So this will create a helix for us. And I'm just gonna go for the defaults. So we create the helix, you can't see it because it's inside here. And unfortunately, it's created along the wrong plane. It's created on the top there. So I'm just going to right click, transform, and rotate this around. So let's rotate it around this way. OK, that's so we've got our helix there. I'm going to stay in this view. You've got a nice parametric line that we can use to see where this lays. So this, if I bring back the revolve, you can see that it starts from the top and ends at the bottom here so we've got this line click on the helix and we can select the radius and bring this radius out so we're looking to increase this radius to the same size of our revolve and what we'll do is we can go further because it doesn't matter the height we can change so we've got these turns and I don't want the pitch like that, so I'm going to increase the pitch. That will increase the pitch like so. And we'll put some more height on there. There we go. Something like that. And let's go we're at 21, so 50. And we'll right click and transform that and move it down. So I'm just going to, doesn't have, don't have to worry about it being bigger than the actual object itself. So we've got the helix, we've got the part. Now you can see a problem here is that this is not one single edge, it's multiple edges. I'm gonna fix that over in the curves workbench, come into the curves workbench. So we're gonna select, click on one edge, control click the other. Let's just zoom out a bit. Control click the next, control click the next. And then we'll use the join curves tool. So this tool here, or curves, and come down to join curves that creates one single curve out of that helix we can click on that helix now and press the space bar if i hover over that helix you can see it's one click the new join curve helix control click the surface and then use the create a curves on surface object that will create that curve on the surface object there and you can see that if we press the space bar, it's actually following that helix, like so. Bring the revolve back, and and what we could do with that is take that curve on surface, come down and look at the face width, input edge, and output, and make this normal to face like so and that will place that normal to that face there and you can see we've got some distortion there and that's because it's distorting over this edge here 
If I wanted this tighter, I can actually create the helix and just bring this in tighter to that object. So we're coming to the curve on surface and we'll change the width, something like 1.5. And we can see that's moving outwards. So we want that to move inwards. I'm gonna come down and change the symmetrical and set that to true. And you'll see that will place that along the symmetry of that object now. So we've got a thread that's moved across here. So you can see we can use this for drill threads or Archimedes screws or anything like that. So we can increase the face width if we so desire. Let's push that outwards like so. And there we have a thread that's going across that object. And this will work for both, let's get rid of those and the sketch and the line. This will also work with standard primitives in the part design such as a cylinder and we can do the same in here we can add an helix and go for the helix there create that i'm just going to press the space bar on that make sure we close this window because we don't want to create it again and we're looking at the radius and the pitch of the helix not the cylinder let's bring the radius up and also the pitch and bring the height up as well like so and you can see that sitting there again it's going to be two parts or three parts depending on how many turns you've got in here so we'll come over to the curves workbench click one this part here and this part join those up with the join curves and has that done the whole lot? Let's have a look. Helix, press the space bar on the helix to hide it. So we've got one join curve there. Bring back the cylinder by pressing the space bar. And we'll click on the cylinder, control click the helix or the join curve helix and use our create a curve on surface object. Obviously curve, curves on surface if you so desire. That's great it outside of there so we can come back to the curve on service come down look for our symmetrical set this to true bring that in and then we obviously we need the output as normal to face like so that places that normal to face going along there and because this is fully parametric if we go back to the helix bring this back and we can change the height let's bring this down we can see this is moving down now see that point there press the space bar and we've got a problem with the join curve so what we'll need to do is actually come into the join curve and it's because the edges have changed so if you have a single edge that's going across here you're fine if you use the join curve to connect other those edges you're going to hit a problem so we're going to have to actually just delete that join curve unfortunately this won't be parametric because of that and delete that curve on surface click the helix and then use the join curve and that creates that join curve there that's high that helix and then we can do the same And we have that there so is there a way around this i'm just going to play with symmetrical to plane and put it normal to face as we so did before and by normal to face if you want a nice ribbon to go around there so we've got these and we've got the join curves and we've used the spiral to place that around there so the helix two different things so is there a way around this problem we have on the curves workbench this parametric compression spring so i'm just going to hide that and the join curve and let's have a look at the parametric compression spring you can see that is one single curve which is basically perfect for what we want 
So let's increase the diameter and bring back our cylinder. Click on that, click on the cylinder and create our curve on surface, which is there. Come into the curve on surface, compression springs there. You can see it's still being highlighted. You've got the orange dotted line and the compression spring. Press the space bar on the compression spring to hide that. And now we can use the dotted line for the curve on surface and then use our normal to face like so. And you can see that's placed that there. And also click on that and come down and we can play with symmetry to make that true. To make the screw thread or the Archimedes screw if we need this a bit bigger and we come into the curve on the surface and we can increase the millimetre size if we so desire. Like so. So that parametric spring, if we want to change that, that compression spring, we can change the amount of turns like so. And we've got a fully parametric thread slash Archimedes screw that we can play with with that compression spring and changing the length, etc. Like so. Other ways to use this tool is if we come into the part and that's throw in a cube. Let's create a cube in there and I'm gonna click on this surface and come into the sketcher. And let's click off that surface so we do it all in the sketcher. Click on that surface, cube, length, width, height. And that's fine, I'm just gonna keep it to that. I'm just gonna create a sketch upon that surface and we're gonna add uh, some kind of B spline object here like so. Escape that, so we've got that there. And close that. Say I wanted to take that sketch and we'll come back into the part. And I wanted to extrude that sketch and okay that. Extrude that bit too fast. Let's click on that. Let's bring this down to something like a millimeter. Working on such a small scale Obviously you'll be working at a larger scale. And we can click on say this curve here that's touching this face, come around to the back and we can project it onto this face. So we'll come into the curves workbench and we've got that curve there. Bring this around to the back, click on that and we'll use the curve on surface and that's projected that forward onto that face. And we can use that as well. So that curve on surface, if we come up to the part and we'll send that one millimeter. I'm gonna go backwards this time. So I'm gonna do that minus one and okay that. And that's just changed that. It's on that wrong actually, that's changed that to one. And that's gone inwards now. So that's gone inwards because we're on a different face. And what I'm going to do is change this. So this object, I want to keep that. And I'm going to control click this object in here, which I'm going to use the curve on surface, the extrude. And we're going to do a cut between those. So that's created a cut there. So we've got the top and the bottom and what we can do is come into that cut the original extrude curves on surface we use the extrude there didn't we and that sketch finally get down to there and we can modify this so I'm going to come and hit close like that and obviously that will change it on the bottom as well so we've got that option there as well other ideas, if we keep with this object, we can take this line here and control click this face, come over to the curves workbench first. So taking this line, control click this face, 
and then using the credit curve on the surface, though it's a line, it's still counted as a curve. So we've got a curve on the surface there. And remembering we can use the output curve only. Let's go by normal to face now. So that's created that there. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to just set this to something like 0 0.2. So we get a little lip, create a little lip there. I'm going to take that and we're going to come over to the part workbench. Let's click off that and let's have a look. So we're looking along the Y axis that goes along here. I'm going to take that and we're going to add this 3D offset on there, or we could do a extrude along the Y axis. And I only want it being jutted out by 0. say 0. 0.25 like that. That's gone the wrong way. So that's come in to the extrude and um, we can change this zero and change this one to 0.25. That sends it out this way. So we're creating a lip on here and we can use that line there. Now let's put a little chamfer or fillet on there. Something very small, so 0.1 like so. And we've created ourselves a little lip that sits on there, what we can union into our part quite easily, like so. There's another option there. We've got other options. So for instance, we've made grooves, but we could come into the curves workbench. Let's actually go into the sketcher and create a sketch in here, X, Y plane. And I'm gonna create something like this, escape that and close. So we've got that going across that face there. And we can position this in the correct position, which I'm looking along the Y and the Z is away Y X. So we'll just move this like so. So we've got that curve running through there. And in the curves workbench, I can click that curve and click that face. And we use the trimmer face there, like so. And we'll come in the trim face, bring back the cut. So I've got this face trimmed. But what I want to do is, I don't actually really want that trim face. I just want it so I can get an edge. So transform that and move it out like so. So we've got that edge there that follows that. I can take that edge there, control click that face. I've just pressed the space bar. Remember you press the space bar to hide and show when I pull back this cut, I press the space bar to bring it back. So we'll use that edge and that face. Curve on edge, there we go. Curve, sorry, curve on surface. And now that's there, we can click on this, press the space bar. And we've got our curve that's running along there. Obviously we can move it, I'll right click transform if we so desire and move this about. But I don't really want to move that at the moment. And we can come in and do some output curve only. Let's go by normal to face. So that's there like so. And we can change this to 0 0.2 millimeters. And we can use that and come over to the part and do some 3D offset on long there, full offset, etc. So that's going in like so. so. You can see how that's cutting into that object and okay that. And we can use that offset against this object. And first select the object first that you want to keep and the one that we want to remove and do a cut there. So let's cut that along there. 
you still see we can got a dotted line. So that's just because if we come into the cut and look at the offset, we've got a curve on the surface, just press the space bar on there, just get rid of that. So we've created that line going through there. So creating a curve, transferring that curve to that object and going from there. So that's using the trim tool. Obviously we could have probably done that with the sketch itself. So that sketch that goes along there, like so. Let's change that to a different position. Placement, position. Let's click on it, bring it back and change that to there. And what's happened is that's broken that trim face. Trim face is now gone. But we're going to use this curve so we can use that curve control click the face and do the same basically so we've come over to the curves workbench and click on there click on that curve and we've got that curve running through there so there's a number of options for how to get that curve on that face but if you're trimming faces what you do with curves, you can actually do that as well. I kind of blasting through this just to give you an overview and thinking outside the box of how to use this. Because there's, there's many applications, it's sometimes hard to come up with an application. So it's basically like a brain dump from my side of things. Now, if we think back to one of the projects we did before, which I did before, and let's have a look. So look at the boat one. I've actually created a number of curves with this boat we did. I think it was last week I did this one. And I've used the curve on surface here with the boat. So come in. This is an old one actually, this is an old file. Let's see if I can find the original. And we did this, so look at date. Boat and hole, spelled wrong, so let's just open that. There we go, so we've got this one here. And we can use, so we could create this in one of the videos. So if we wanted to use this curve against this golden surface. Is this a golden surface or a loft, I believe? Can't remember. Doesn't matter, I've got a number of surfaces in here that are lost and golden surfaces. So let's bring that one back, there we go. So we've got this surface that is lofted through these lines. Let's say we wanted to take this curve here, control click this surface and project that onto that surface doesn't look like it's done anything but it actually has you can see the dotted line behind that let's press the space bar there's the dotted line and then we can use that if we come down to our last operation the curves on the surface and we can click on it come into our properties and we can look along here and output and i'm going to go by normal to face so you can see we've got a bit of a problem there and that hasn't worked and that's because I've selected the curve that was behind so I'm just going to delete that I selected this one here which is a different shape which is the mirror I don't actually want the mirror so let's find that mirror in here that's part of the ruled surface and the golden mirror don't want that one don't want that mirror let's bring back that's better that one there right now we can do it so this curve this surface and we'll create that along there so that's created along there now we can just click on that curve see if we can get that curve by just selection there we go press the space bar we've got that dotted line that goes along there so we can then take that dotted line which is the last operation here. And we come down to the binormal to face like so. That's better. And we increase the millimeters to five mil. And we've got that going.
going along there and we can use in the part a 3d thickness upon there and depending on where we want to send it do we want to send it inwards so we use a minus there and bring this up to two mil and minus two mil so it sends it inwards so you can see how that sent that inwards like so two mil outwards minus two mil inwards and fill that in there so we've filled that strut going in there we can do the same with the others if we so desire so we can do the same with same with these cross pieces but there we have that which follows the golden surface we may have to do some minor adjustments in there move that back just transform that back into position but you can see how we can actually use that to create some strutting in there so we've got the offset there right click transform and just make a slight amendment like so so it's out of there so there's another option for that we can do the same for these ones as well so we can click on that line there control click the surface should be in the curves workbench to do this first and then create that line along there and again come into that line and create something like four mil curve only by normal to face and we can see that being placed along there so we can get some framework in there for our model so i hope that's given you something to think about and that's the curves on the surface hope you enjoyed that lesson and i'll see you again soon if you like what you're seeing please subscribe to my site and also i have a ko-fi site where you can actually donate a few pence or a few pounds dollars or whatever your currency is and that's at ko-fi.com slash M-A-N-G zero. And there you'll be able to help me fund my site and all the money that I actually get from any funds will actually get pushed back into the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing. I'll see you next time.